Okay. Now we're going to start making wood chips. Um, I want to talk about uh, tool safety. It's a real uh, simple, um, simple guiding principle to um, carving wood is that you never have your hand in front of the direction of the blade. So I'm never going to hold my work like that and carve like this. Um, never going to hold it like that and carve like this. And it's really, really simple, but man, it's really easy to break that rule. So that comes to um, different ways to holding your work. So there's this little relief carving thing here. Um, and I did this for some workshops there a few years ago. I, I, sometimes you just never have enough clamps or the right clamps. So I made a little cardboard cutout. It actually fits a, a square or a circle. Um, I really often, I have lots of pieces of this stuff kicking around the shop. This is like a non-slip kind of stuff, drawer liner um, kind of stuff. You can buy it at a hardware store or grocery store. And uh, that circle fits in here. I would screw this down to the workbench or another piece of wood that is maybe clamped. And then uh, this piece of work is held and, and I don't have to hold it. So my hands can always be behind it. Um, second way to get around the hand in front is two hands on the tool. Um, gouges even small gouges I often recommend uh, one hand here and one hand here this hand is kind of finessing and guiding and this hand is doing the pushing um, this is another way to hold the work this is a Lee Valley um, jig and um, it has another insert that you can screw screw onto the bottom of your work and then hold it there any any sort of jig or anything like that that's going to hold your work is to your advantage um, safety wise and also ergonomically for your body you know uh, this this guy can turn and it can also you know change angles this way that way so it makes it really fantastic for working on something in detail if you're like right here you're not bent over like this. And I'll say that, you know, I think all the old timers and many people still today carve like this. And people carving masks and doing just brilliant work carve like this. And they've got their bench there. Um, but boy, it kills my neck and kills my back sitting like that for some hours and carving like that. You do get good control because you can use your body and your hand, but you're also really susceptible to holding it like this and carving into your hand. So, But man, I've seen, you know, very, very experienced carvers whacking with an ass right in their lap. They can do it, but I, I don't recommend it for beginners. I recommend um, holding your work. Now, the simplest way is with a clamp. And that's a really standard clamp. Um, it's called a bar clamp. It's very versatile in, in how, how big it is, how deep it is. And, um, and you can basically, uh, you know, just clamp to whatever solid work surface you have. A couple clamps holds that good. I would recommend, however, um, switching to a clamp like this. These little speed clamps, they don't have the same holding power, but the advantage being for carving, this is plastic. If you accidentally hit this with your knife, um, you haven't ruined your day. Um, you may be dulled your knife, but you're not going to destroy your knife, which you could on a metal clamp. So that's number one, just having a couple clamps. It's the easiest, easiest way to hold something for carving. And that way, you don't need your body or your exposed hand to be holding the work it's held for you. Um, and then, you know, this is just about a year old to me. This is the Cadillac of 
of uh, curving apparatuses. Um, this is the carver's bench from Lee Valley. And there's these clamp sort of things, you know, that I had before. And you can clamp different sort of shapes using this universal hole pattern. Um, and then they've also got these, it's called a gooseneck clamp that can uh, come down on your workpiece like that and hold it. Um, brilliant aspects of this thing are this ability to tilt up and this ability to turn. So you can be working on something and you're all here and you're not um, too bent out of shape. Um, you can put the this thing up on blocks. My brother Gordon does that. He's got one on blocks, one down low. And uh, he's also, you know, put giant pieces of work on here. And uh, it's really pretty stable. Um, so holding the work is uh, central to being safe with the work. And... Um, that's the basic, the, the, you know, the essence of, of all I really want to say about that is keep your, keep your lead hand away. Um, for me, most of the time that I get cut now is reaching for tools. Or if I'm using this guy with that wicked tip, oh, a bunch of stuff, I'll be sweeping dust away and go and uh, open up the bag of my skin. Um, anyway, so I'm going to do a little bit of demonstrating here um, for all these different types of tools and how they cut. Um, I'll start with a couple hook knives and I'm just going to make some random cuts and uh, show you cutting with the grain and across the grain and uh, how it is that uh, why the heck would you want so many different shapes and different curves on those tools. Um, so I'll just slip by and grab a couple. Okay, I'll start with this one. It's got a pretty aggressive hook to it. Um, uh, there's, because it's beveled on both sides, you can cut both directions. So the basic grip for cutting away from you is an underhand grip and hold the tool like that. It's some motion in the wrist. Now to get it to cut, you want it almost flat to the wood. See that I'm holding it just flat and it's carving. You increase that angle a little tiny bit and you're really carving. And that is the bevel angle to the wood and it is a crucial, crucial thing to carving. The feel for how much bite to take in the wood. Now the other thing that I'm doing is I'm not pushing it straight across like that. That's quite a bit more effort. I'm turning it and I'm slicing across like that and it's curling and you know when it's working when it's easy now you'll see this is leaving a bunch of bumps with this curve I can I can dig a hole here I can go nice and deep down and keep carving now I'm entering the domain of this principle. 
down in the wood. I'm now down to this point where I'm starting to bind the fibers going in the other direction. So I need to cut those back the other way. And it's awkward to do it like this, so I'm going to switch my grip. I'm going to put my left hand that way, and I use my right hand a little bit this way. I'll even um, just pull it like that with my hand as a grip. And I'll curve back this way, and I'll cut those fibers this way. Oh, I'm all bound up again. This is this is the dance of carving, you know, and I'll cut a little bit sideways to clean that up. So those are the two ways. I can do long, nice cuts like this. Um, I'll make a little bit of groovy. Um, really, the wood should be, should be giving me a bit of a harder time one way or the other, but this green alder is pretty friendly. Um, I would love to be able to show you, you know, what I showed you in that cedar where one way it's the, the grain is tearing and not cutting so good. But this one thing about green alder is it's really, really easy to carve. So I've got this curve, you know, it's dynamite for getting down in. 90% of the cutting always happens just here on that part of the curve. You know, I can dig a nice, dig down with that guy. Um, same goes for this. There we go. All the carvings happening right here. Where those places meet, it's good to come across sideways and bash the camera. <laughs> okay, now I want to clean that up a little bit. I made this rough and I want it smooth. I'm going to come to a flatter knife like that and uh, just pare it off. Now I'm getting a bit of resistance. I'll cut this way, cutting a little cleaner. Back to nice and smooth. See this? Uh, just taking a hair. These are really skinny. If I try to dig too much, it's just uh, too much. I'm too thin, I'm sweeping just right from cutting. That beautiful curvy motion is just um, slicing. The blade is never really square to the work. It's slicing across quite a circular motion with my backhand. Similar, this blade is really similar that way. It, uh, it's nice and flat. can really, uh, you know, Clean up your work. Um, now I'll have a little go with this reverse bevel because it's really good down in. If I want to go deep, steep, this guy is pretty, pretty good for that.
Okay. So, you know, um, I make it easy. I, I make it look easy. <laughs> and, and, and when you get it, it is easy. So if you're having trouble making a hook knife work for you, you're generally speaking too steep and too square to how you're cutting. So I can't say that enough, just barely cutting a little tiny bit and you are cutting on a slice, not square to your work. So this little guy, uh, still a dynamite little tool. Um, you know, works both directions for me. Um, and they have their place in, in carving. You know, every knife will have its place in a different carving. So I'll demonstrate some of these um, gouges now. And now this can be used a couple ways. I can do this by hand. Um, again, I can cut like this straight. It's easier if I go like that. Skew the angle a little bit. It's making these curly shavings. It's nice. Um, again, it's all about bevel angle. There's the bevel just a little bit. Now, if I want to do some heavier work with it, well, then I'm going to use a mallet. And um, I'm not beating the hell out of this thing. I'm just tap, tap, tapping. If you go too deep and you bury these edges, um, it's not going to cut very well. You have to uh, moderate the bevel angle by uh, raising and lowering the gouge as you go to make sure it doesn't dig too deep. Because I've got brute force and I'm not just doing it by hand, I can cut straight against the grain, square against the grain. So you can see the speed and effectiveness of a nice gouge and uh, mallet can have if you want to move wood. This is uh, same kind of thing, just a smaller scale. Um, And use this guy by hand the same now do I have issue with me cutting towards myself am I going to jab myself in the gut with this really no I'm not because I, it's actually hard to get myself with that because of the nature of my my arms and the mechanics of that so carving towards yourself isn't really a danger um, so, so far I'm just cutting um, 
with and against the grain there cutting across the grain here is a bit of a different beast so the grains going this way it's called short grain this is a really brittle thing It'll break off like that whereas these long fibers are, are supple and stronger So this is just kind of unfair, this piece of alder, it's just, uh, <laughs> it's too nice. <laughs> there we go to our cranky old piece of cedar. Cutting across the grain is not so easy. Oh yeah, back to tearing back to clean cutting. Um, there's some um, techniques to texture the work. So your finished product doesn't always have to be like sanded or planed perfect. Sometimes you want to texture the surface and there's different techniques for texturing. Um, larger scale and smaller scale. One of the techniques, and this is a good gouge for it, is uh, across the grain um, and just making little cutouts in rows like this. So I'm starting pretty steep. I'm dramatically dropping my hand and popping out a little chip. The secret to this looking good is consistency. So sometimes on the side of a bowl, you don't want to sand it smooth. You can texture it like this. Um, that's one kind of size. Um, this little guy, this flex cut, this little dude is another much smaller way of texturing. So in rows, you know, this looks pretty cool. Again, I'm starting pretty steep and I'm dropping my hand dramatically to just make a little scoop. So those are good on bowls and things like that. Um, I'll show you the texturing with the big ads is So this is a cross the grain kind of texturing um, and uh, I'm going to cut a little bit at an angle of the grain and I'm just going to chop real easy until I get my good size bite. <laughs> you got a spot? So when you get into a rhythm, that's kind of how it goes. So all that texturing at the Wiccan Inishian and at Vickers Gallery was done by hand, just like this. If I was doing it for a beam, I might be a little bit more careful to make sure they're really even rows. Um, often I measure measure every other one, so I'm starting or ending on a mark, and so I'm keeping it decently straight. Um, this other style of texturing common to West Coast carving is 
is with this adds. Um, that's a, a Kestrel blade on a handle that I made that was modeled after their texture adds, and it's very flexible. And uh, this case, I'm going with the grain, and I'm just making little tiny cuts and then following them in rows down along the grain. Um, if you look closely at a lot of different totem poles, uh, their surfaces are completely textured with an ad similar to this and with people with more skill than I at this particular style. <laughs> So we're making rows down this way. Again, consistency is the key to making it look good, and I'm not being very consistent. <laughs> So with texturing, your blade's not really wanting to penetrate and dive deep. You want to bounce it off. It doesn't help that the block's all wiggly under my grip, but for demonstration purposes, that's that. Um, Now, when you're sculpting wood and you know it has to go, that's good to be able to use bigger tools to help your stock removal. Um, and uh, this is the small gutter adds, but this is a little different in that it is made for cutting. Um, and not just bouncing off. Now the thing is with all of these tools is not a single one of them is a pry bar. Um, oftentimes it will dig in and you'll want to go and you'll want to you will break the tool. So it's better to just work the cut down patiently until it pops out on its own. And that's, you know, how we sculpt with an uh, ads. Also pretty effective across the green. Anything's going to work in this green alder. <laughs> I'm just making a mess but it's fun it's fun as heck and now I got this lip ads here and uh, if I wanted to clean up all that well this is the one I can ch chase after all those divots and clean it up Again, really little cuts, um, and uh, you know the control and the aim comes with practice. Usually, tell people you're aiming for this backside, so you're kind of like aiming to just bang it against the back of the wood and then you adjust that just by a little hair and now you're hitting you know at a really really steep angle just enough to be able to cut so adzes do exist uh you know in in europe and places like that they're a little bit different style and they sure use them in boat building and uh and uh you know, 
in other ways, but you know, to me and what I've been exposed to, most mostly it's West Coast carving and and as work um, in this style. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think it's time to move on to our demonstration carving, and um, I'll get that set up and uh, put a few tools out for that purpose. We'll uh, do the design part and, okay.